Good afternoon. I have served as CEO of Malta Enterprise for just over 100 days now. And I had to get used to a lot of new things, including having my face as poster cover of the Metcan Forum magazine. But one of those things which I had to quickly understand and adhere and answer are seemingly basic questions. A specific one stands out. Why Malta? Many of us can agree on the inherent values, its beauty, its warmth, the Mediterranean lifestyle, which makes the island as good as a holiday destination as it is to do business. In fact, this question is as relevant to the medical cannabis industry as it is for other businesses setting up in Malta. I will share an open secret on what makes Malta a good place to do business. The government and its authorities are acting as market shapers, not merely fixing market failures. Taking the example of medical cannabis, Malta acted quickly to legislate and regulate the space, giving certainty for those operating in Malta. For medical cannabis, Malta has an enabling legislation as well as very clear regulations, a transparent application process which leads to the issuing of one license which encompasses the whole process. Coupled with that is our pro-business, one-stop-shop attitude that we have adopted as a nation. Here, Malta Enterprise acts as the intermediary, as the intermediary between businesses and government authorities, including with our world, uh, medicines authority, which has a world-class standing. Make no mistake, however, our pro-business attitude does not translate to open for all. Our rejection rate of projects stands at around 50%. To date, we have granted 24 letters of intent, while we rejected around 25 other projects which were evaluated by Malta Enterprise. But I'm not saying this to discourage anyone. We have welcomed compliant companies with open arms. Our processes are simple. But companies vying for a license in Malta need to go through a thorough due diligence and evaluation of their business plans as a start. Then they have to comply with the strictest EU good medical practice certification. This will ensure that when in the next few weeks, by the first quarter of 2020, the first made in Malta products leave the island, we know that we are producing the best quality pharma great product requested and demanded across the globe. Of course, there have been and there are challenges to overcome in the process of becoming the best. Challenges that come from our process of educating the institutions that support this business, such as banks. First of all, from discussions we had with international banks, this is not a challenge unique to Malta. Even jurisdictions that have legislated medical cannabis years ago had and still face the reluctance of banks to take this business. Some reputable banks, however, are not only giving services to medical cannabis companies, but are also investing heavily in them. Locally, Malta Enterprise reached out to all banks. While there is a reluctance, admittedly, by some banks to take up clients from this industry, other banks are ready to listen. Indeed, there are local banks that are in the process of offering their services. Alternatively, companies setting up in Malta are also finding banking solutions by major international and European banks. So while the banking challenge is real, most are finding long-standing solutions, and I predict that local banks will come online in the near future. 
As we have done by legislating effectively this area, Malta should continue to take the lead at EU level. We should start by placing ourselves at the front line to tackle the challenge of lack of harmonization regulations across the European Union. The fragmented unharmonized regulation, both in the EU and the US, is creating confusion in the sector. This needs to change, and Malta, as a leader in the medical cannabis sector, can work to bring about this change. That is why I urge the European Medical Cannabis Association, led by Sita Schubert, which is being launched during this World Forum in Malta with the support of Malta Enterprise, to make the harmonization of regulations on medical cannabis products as one of its major efforts. Now that the projects approved by Malta Enterprise are hitting the ground running, we are thinking of what's next for our cluster. I want to make a strong case today for the need for more education and research for medical cannabis in Malta. In the past week, we have already, weeks, we have already signed a memorandum of understanding for collaboration and research in medical cannabis with the renowned Italian University La Sapienza. We hope to start working on projects in the coming weeks. During this World Forum as well, Malta Enterprise will be signing a memorandum of understanding with the prestigious McGill University to collaborate on academic research in Canada and in Malta. We want more of these collaborations to better prepare the workforce of the industry, but also to contribute to the research which can benefit patients and the industry in general. That is how I believe we can take this sector forward. And that is why I believe there is return in the companies if the companies themselves contribute towards more research. The returns of research for the industry will be unmeasurable. As a jurisdiction, we are also studying new niches in the medical cannabis space. One of the main new markets we are looking at regulating in the same way is cannabis for veterinary medical use, which the minister will speak in more detail about soon. There is more in the pipeline. We are working on our way to becoming the best jurisdiction for medical cannabis in Europe. And we hope that by next year, we would be in a better position to continue to strengthen our position in the continent with new innovations and opportunities within the space. Once again, I reiterate that our role as Malta Enterprise is not only to serve as interlocutor to business in Malta, but also to shape the markets with the ultimate aim to create value mechanisms for the benefit of Malta and its citizens. Thank you very much.